You know, Bazalana, like I said earlier, I think one of the greatest blessings for us as a church is to have fathers who love us and mothers who love us and who, who are always available to mold us. It was 1985 when I invited our dad to come and speak at our church. <laughs> We were having a marriage seminar, <laughs> and I invited him to come and do the seminar. I couldn't do the marriage seminar, money because I was flying solo at the time, <laughs> a single guy. I'd heard about this minister of the gospel who's well-traveled, international speaker, used by God all over the world, and I took a chance to invite him, and to my surprise, he agreed to come. And when he came, these were the early days of our church. We couldn't afford to put him up in a hotel. So he slept at my home, because I was still living at home with my parents, slept on my bed, which was a three-quarter bed in my bedroom. And he was driving a Cressida at the time, and we have a, a garage. It was We had to squeeze that car in that garage. Pray to God it fits, and that the door can close. And he spent quality time with my parents and he ate everything that there was at the home. And the Saturday came, went to the service, and the couples didn't show up. The weather was bad, it was raining, the sound system had delayed, the couple stayed away, everything was wrong. And I tried to delay the service as long as possible, hoping that at least things will get right. Nothing got right, we were delayed by an hour and a half, I think for the start time, and finally, when I realized that nothing's gonna get better than that, all the tova who was there, then I handed over the service to Dr. Maswangani. And uh, I was so tense, so afraid that when he gets up there, he's gonna lecture me and discipline me and tongue lash me for being disorganized and whatever. Instead, before he could say anything, he turned to me and gave me the greatest encouragement that has marked my life. Talk, talk to me about the potential he sees in me, what a great leader I am, how grateful he was to be at the meeting, and I'm sitting there thinking, grateful for what, you know? As this. <laughs> and for those days, that Saturday, he preached Sunday, I was at the church. And then I remember when we went out for lunch, he took interest in my own personal life, something out I really advise some of you young leaders, get a senior leader who can be a mother or a father over your life and help you navigate. And Dr. Maswanganyi took interest in me to invest in my life. And for years and years, we've had conversations even now about leadership issues. And I was glad even when I got married and uh, he was very much a part of that journey, counseling us, the Mappy Shop, even to date. And even now, as I've transitioned into other areas of leadership, he's the one who has encouraged me a lot. And that's why in all our events and major shifts and major things that happen in our church, none of them will ever happen without him being here. Amen. And that's why when we build this church, this first phase of the church, because he was the first leader to show so much grace and love I asked him to dedicate this church, and we have a plaque right there where he dedicated this church way back in 2001. Papa, we can't thank you enough, Namani, for who you are. There's many people that Dr. Maswangani has raised in ministry, all race groups, different parts of the world, that God has used him in an incredible way. And also to see them, what a gift we had this week, to see him standing side by side with Dr. Gumbi, both of them being from the Assemblies of God. And both of them senior leaders who have embraced people like us who were not embraced by your, your spirit-empowered churches. We were not seen in a good light. And so, and I just want to tell you how grateful we are. In this 39 years of our walk with God, he's been working with us for 34 years in this church. 
and we are grateful. And so let's stand, Bazalana, on our feet as we welcome our father, our dad, Dr. Elijah Maswanganya. And at the same time, as we appreciate our mother, Mama Tandi. Maswa, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. standing allow me once again with all humility humbleness and meekness to intelligently recognize acknowledge and appreciate his excellency our Excellency. Let us all say Our Excellency. Again. For the third time. Our Excellency, the Honorable Presiding Bishop of Grace Bible Church. and the founding visionary leader of this word explosion conference 2022. We look to you, Bishop Musa, perhaps more than you look to us. Gumbi and I are exceeding, are facing out. Last August, I turned 78. In two years, I will be 80 years. <laughs> Bishop Musa, don't take this lightly. You used to look to us intelligently, responsibly, intensely, but we are now looking up to you. I will need something like three hours to tell all these people why not only Gumbi, me, the other bishops who shared with me this pulpit from different countries, different ethnic groups, but if I was to give reasons, it will take me more than three hours to tell these people why we now look to you. While standing, Bishop, let me give you the main reason. Gumbi and I cannot be champions of all generations. <laughs> the 
the former heavyweight boxing champion, Muhammad Ali, shouldn't have fought Spinks. There was no need. He was great. He was popular. He was a great fighter. He stinked like a bee. He floated like a butterfly. He was filthy rich. So he shouldn't have fought Spinks. And look what Spinks did to him. Although he regained. Because if you are still an amateur and you become an elder or you become great, greatness will kill you. That is why the Bible says an elder should not be an amateur. So we look to you because we cannot be champions of all generations. I am 78, my killer girl. She is 76. She is trying to catch up with me. Ungesuko tikegu. Will you please make yourselves comfortable in the presence of the Lord? Thank you, Tandi. I thank you in public because you sent me off to the international public. You did not only marry me, you married my God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, you married my calling, you married my vision, you married my ministry, and I have been married to you for 50 years. And you have never hindered my calling and my vision. I have traveled to over 130 countries. You have never stopped me from going to any of those countries. I have given talks in over 40 universities globally. You made me tick in those universities. But above all, you gave birth to three of my children free of charge. And you gave birth to them painfully. And I only facilitated. <laughs> if I was not a, 
a clerical holy priest, I would say to facilitate is nice. But I didn't say that. <laughs> Bishop Musa, I, I have a handout which I also gave you a copy and the, 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 the speakers that spoke before me, I also gave them copies. And I can clearly discern where God is leading Grace Bible Church. And allow me to continue the vein in making that happen. You will notice in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 41, you have to read all these verses in order to get the gist of the awesomeness of the theme of this conference. In fact, Bishop Musa, if I was as popular as the Pope, but within the context of Pentecostalism, to say one word like the Pope would say one word, and all the Catholics would follow. If I was big enough to say one word, to the Pentecostal body of Christ in South Africa, Africa, and globally, I would say this. For the next years, until Jesus comes, eschatologically speaking, I don't know when will Jesus come. But from now on, from 2022 until Jesus come, if I was big enough to make an announcement that must be followed by every born again, spirit filled Christian, I would say in all local churches of the born again, spirit filled, body of Christ, let us make working while it is still day theme for all our local churches until Jesus comes. If every pastor if all the elders in all local churches could emphasize that every born again Christian should do the work of the ministry until Jesus comes, we would transform the whole world in no time. And I am not talking cheap transformation here. I am talking spiritual transformation, mental, academic, intellectual transformation 
physical transformation. I'm talking about health. We would defeat HIV AIDS, Ebola, Corona, for your information, we have had seven or eight other Coronas before COVID-19. From World War I, World War II, and Adolf Hitler killing six million, and, and what happened? Thereafter, the war. I have been reading a secular book titled The Scars of War. You will do everything to save a soul. Because so many people died in World War I, World War II. And now, the clouds of World War III are now dangerously low. We must pray for God to intervene between Russia and the Ukraine. NATO and the G7 if they don't behave, something horrible will happen to this world. And this world is gonna blow up in flames. So if every local church of the born again spirit filled could embrace this theme and apply it and practice it, we would save the world. Yeah. I will tell you quickly who I mean by we. But if every born again Christian in every local church was to embrace the theme of this conference, which was given to the bishop by God, the Holy Spirit, perhaps to spark revival, not only in South Africa, Africa and globally, I believe that transformation can come in a shorter time. I'm talking about spiritual transformation, mental transformation, physical transformation, economic transformation, political transformation, environmental transformation, agricultural transformation. Zambia alone, the soil is so rich and Mozambique. If these two countries can be developed agriculturally, they can feed the whole of Africa. But in order for that to happen, we must take the theme of this conference very seriously. You will notice that um, there are four vital observations in John chapter nine. Observation number one, about the blind man 
Who was born blind? Who was miraculously healed by Jesus? Let us all say miraculously. Anything that will help our contemporary world today, it must be miraculous. It must be mysterious. It must be revelational. It must be in God's will. It must be in God's plan. And it must be driven by purpose. Observation number one about the healing of the blind man, the neighbors revealed, surprised, and skepticism. Any salvation and miracle from above which will not be seen by the neighbors, that miracle is not genuine. Observation number two, the Pharisees showed disbelief and prejudice. Any transformation, any revival, and any miracle that does not provoke the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the hypocrites, the sun hindrances, the sun ballads, the Geshems, the Tobias, the Delilahs, the Goliaths, and the opposers of Jesus' miracles and the will of God. Observation number three, the parents believed but kept quiet for fear of excommunication. And if ever there is time when the church should refuse to be silenced, it is now. Dr. Gumbi and the bishop who ministered so faithfully to us, who just left, they all emphasized that it must start in the home. Never, never underestimate the smallest enterprise called the home or the family. If revival can start in the family, you can be sure there will be transformation elsewhere. Emma Changanabari, Emma Luango Yati Yindo, Roofs, Yifigenete Eslo Sotala. Many of us are from beautiful homes, well furnished, ceiling, roof. But the ceiling lit, not the roof lit. The finger that the mangaba. Instead of husband and wife kissing each other at night, they bite each other.
And observation number four, and the healed man showed consistent growing faith and confidence. And I want to call that confidence identity. And as I was preparing Bishop Musa, I noticed something very significant that blessed me. My wife had to wake up at night to, to come to my studio lecture room to check on me if I am still alive. And I discovered that this blind man, Bishop, he, he has not, he was not in a local church where you can grow quickly Amen. under governance of a local church or what we call autonomy or indigenousness of a local church, which means a local church that is self-governing, self-supporting, self-propagating, self-determination under the Lordship of Jesus. Because in a local church, it, it is where there is everything where you can grow right. I call a local church a room of fame where a nobody can become a somebody. Where a nothing can become something. Where a person who failed many a times like St. Winston Churchill failing his metric, you can pass your metric again. I call the local church a place of possibilities yeah. where all things are possible because of the presence of Jesus. Where Jesus is, there is possibilities. Now here is the secret I discovered, Bishop Musa, as I was studying about this man who was born blind and Jesus miraculously healed him. It is the way he answered so many questions. He never attended Bible study. Angayan Dangi Katikazim. With a young Ukuburi will and Ale Martini. A young Ukuburi will with the Holy Spirit. But already he was so bold. Already he was so strong. Already he decided to take full responsibility about his faith. He would not allow anybody to separate him from Christ. And he was even ready to die. May God give us such individual members in the body of Christ. But allow me to conclude in this session by answering a question which I consider to be crucially important to us in South Africa and Africa particularly. And the question is simply, what will it take for the body of Christ to do the works of Christ. 
You and I are saved to serve. You and I are saved to be ambassadors for Christ. You and I are called to be the representatives of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in all human professions. There are over 40,000 professions in our contemporary world. Just imagine if every profession you are in and you were to represent Jesus right there, we would work the work of the ministry while it is still day. If every teacher, every nurse, every medical doctor, every astronaut, every mechanic, whatever profession you are in, and you happen to be born again, and you happen to be regenerated, and you happen to be a new creation in Christ, and you happen to have crossed from death to life, and you happen to be a partaker of his divine nature, and your name is written in the book of life, and you have a relationship with Christ, and you are saved, baptized in water, and also baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you are a professional, right there in your profession, you would do the works of Christ. <laughs> and I want to conclude this session by suggesting what will it take for us to fulfill the theme of this conference. Working while it is still day. How can we fulfill? How can we practice? Is this doable? How can we do it? Not only talk about it, not only write about it. What will it take? I think before I get into what will it take, I must tell you where historically things went wrong. There was a certain man in history who was so big, popular, influential, powerful, who mixed church and state. He lost politiki. We wouldn't have reached 50 years. Loka ilo famba hi 50 50. He famba hi 100 100. I give 100% to the marriage. And she also give 100. And we don't give it in a reactionary manner. She does her role. I do my God-given role. I am a husband of the Maswangani 
smallest enterprise called the family. I am the leader of the Maswangani family. I am not a leader of the Maswangani by secret ballot. I have been ordained by God. Whether I am a Christian or non-Christian, it is God who instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden. And he instituted marriage for all couples of all races, of all ethnic groups, and of all religions. I know many unsaved couples who are more happier in marriage than saved ones. You may speak in tongues and still fail. <laughs> Speaking in tongues is not a symbol of success. It is like talent. Talent is not the fruit. It is not Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It's like gift. Gift is not integrity. Gift is not character. You can heal the sick and cast out demons and still go to hell. You may ask, hey, Elijah, you are going too far now. Even casting out demons and you, you, you cast out demons and still go to hell. Yes, it's possible. I've been to India 17 times. How is it possible that a, a person can cast out demons without Christ? It is because big demons cast out small demons. It is as simple as that. That is why you must not over preach any form of material prosperity or any form of intellectual success. There is also liberal theology. You must be careful. You must study this man in John 9, who was born blind, all the questions that was posed to him, the way he answered them, they were personal. He did not read volumes of Britannica's concise dictionaries in order to answer right. What will it take for us to transform the world? Our theme tells us in short that we must work while it is still day. But what will it take in order for us to work Number one, it will take a healed person. Now, we should not be simplistic about the word healing, deliverance. Healing in the times of Jesus, it meant you must also experience the God who, 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 who make miracles. Salvation is a miracle. Regeneration is a miracle. Sanctification is a miracle. Redemption is a miracle. That is why only Jesus could buy us back 
People were crucified before Christ, but none of their crucifixion saved humanity. Salvation doesn't go alone. It goes with deliverance. It goes with healing. Did you know that just by entering Grace Bible Church, you are in an arena of miracles? You are an, in an arena of possibilities where you can be saved at any time, you can be delivered at any time, you can be healed at any time, you can experience a miracle at any time. You can be regenerated at any time. You can be made holy, righteous, justified at any time. All these things are a package in salvation. It will take a saved person, a born again person, a regenerated person, in order to influence the world for transformation. Utabulela anka jeso usapuluso. Utabulela anka jeso hausa experience power ya hai. I was blind, but now I can see. The blind man said. And number two, it will take the church to be the church. You know, Maburubari Honalego Ezadilo honors the boor until the church know who she is, she will never transform the world. Linda, for many years, I was given the impression that the works of God, dear Chakaba Ruti, now as a born again Christian, I must become an everlasting spectator. Fold my arms. I must give my ruti forever, doing nothing. Like in the Catholic Church, Rabbi Jean Mas, you are not even allowed to pick up the emblem with your hand and ubula mufela. Father, how can you So, Runaba Zalwani, we have been damaged psychologically by that teaching. Hori, we are born again just to be comfortable, just to sit and do nothing. And how Nam Zalwani is active? Osa it's in next. You know, you will be praised. But when I you are very humble because hauna zeal, enthusiasm, liveliness, excitement. You don't go witnessing for Jesus on the streets, buses, taxis, airplanes. Look how spanning how how we next to Jesus, who sweet konya ana Christian. Society must feel the presence of the church. Society must know that we are there with Jesus in inside ourselves. 
The Bible says, greater is he who is in us. Even if I am not great, but the one who is in me is great and great and great. And he can do wonders through me and through you as ordinary as you are. You don't have to put up anything. Let the church be the church. Let the church discover her identity in Christ. The Bible says if any person be in Christ, that person is never the same again. That person is a new creation. Old things passed away. What are those old things? It's blindness. Kimbamba Mikomboti. Drunkardness. Buloi. Tribalism. Racism. Killing, robbing banks. Defeatile. You are now a new creation. You can take part in creating a new world with the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the last two then I, I am done for tonight. And the third one is a very serious one. The youth must get involved in doing the works of Christ. We must not keep on telling young people, Auna wisdom, auna understanding, auna maturity. Who told you that in order to share Jesus, you need a degree? You need a PhD? You need to be mature. The blind man was not mature, but he answered all the questions right. He never exaggerated. They asked him after he was healed, Ukai Yanong, you are for this thing. I don't know, Nobody knows Jesus' schedule. And no one can control the schedule of Jesus. He came from above. You cannot regulate Christ movement. And no human being or government has a right to regulate the church. And to prove or hauna mutu yaka regulate ang jeso. Bona or jeso of Hayajuang these days. He goes even to the Catholic Church. I met Mother Teresa many a times in India. She was a better Christian than me. Jesu of Vayela Kerekenya Methodist, where they are full of methods. And he saves people right there. Uya Likerekenya Lutere, Yaba Pedi. A chancheli pedi, lelo milen cho. Nanke nkila kanya di sali pedi. Nineteen sixty seven, one I had just graduated my from four years of Bible college, my first wedding. Kitsama kabu kaye. This couple, uh, and the lady said, I do. 
and I asked the pedi, Utomurata through thick and thin, Armuruja gets the Vagina go for a mutual. But today, Jesus, we are even in the Lutheran Church. We are in the Episcopal Church. We are in the Anglican Church. When Jomo Sono was integrated in the Presbyterian Church, yes, Southern Africa, I was the keynote speaker. Until I got to the pulpit, I released salvation bombs. Let us involve young people in soul winning, in witnessing for Christ, distributing Christian literature. Let them use technological gadgets to witness for Christ. Let them get, let them get involved, even in leadership in the church, even in society. this thing, we, why should we wait until they develop arthritis? <laughs> and it's then that we say they can become, they can take part in leadership. And lastly, what will it take for us to do the works of Christ? And this is a serious one. Bishop Musa, it will involve forums, it will involve church moderators, it will involve Bible colleges, uh, it will involve seminaries, learning institutions, it will involve writers to undergo a paradigm shift. Let us all say paradigm shift. Bishop Musa, until we involve women in the ministry, we will never experience transformation globally. One, because women form a majority. And because women have natural pastoral shepherding tendencies. They love better. When women love, most of the time it's for real. Kiru Nabana, whose life is highly controversial. Because you see? That is what we won't get deep into that. But we need to find answers. Bona Solomon, he had 700. Hey, Ntatona, I can for stand all together. And half it, and only 300 more, what the girlfriends? 300 plus 700, 1,000. Ali won. I am struggling, Kalitos Ali, Lili won.
women must get involved in the work of the ministry. Because when they love, it's for real. And they, they show more mercy, compassion. They even show grace better. They even show concern better. Hang out, I take my wife often to, to, to eating places. It is my wife who will always say, what can we get for children? <laughs> now, when we go to a restaurant, I think about me, I, and myself. <laughs> but it's because Basadi, they gave birth to the human race. So we, 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 we should be vocal in theological seminaries, Bible schools, Bible colleges. We should move away from this old, old, old debate. Should women be ordained? Should women be elders? Should women be deacons? Should women stand behind the pulpit? Should women, if you don't allow them to talk more, they will talk to you alone in your house. You will run away, because no one will ever stop women from talking. I am suggesting, Bishop Ore, let us allow women to participate in the work of the ministry and navigate them, riba guide, riba mentor, riba disciple, riba father. Because if we don't do that, women are very good at disseminating information very fast. I am being diplomatic. They are very good at gossiping. So if we channel them right, they will gossip the gospel through the world. Working, working while it is still day. God bless you. take you to the back, Namani. You know what I've loved about this conference is that we were given practicals <laughs> as to how to work. You know, I, I, I was telling somebody some time ago, I think one of the things that attracted me the most to the charismatic church type teaching, I'm talking about the past, is that not only did they teach us to pray and challenge us to pray, they showed us how to pray. Because we can come to church and be so inspired, be prayed for, be full of the anointing, but not know what to do in practical terms. In fact, as I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm thinking very hard, really, and praying deeply, Kore. I think the remainder of this year in terms of our focus and our theme should be what we are talking about here. Yeah. I was just thinking, sitting there, Bazalana, just how people in different sectors, 
people in medicine, health, people in the teaching fraternity, sports. I met a young man recently who plays snooker. And he listens to the preaching and the teaching. And I didn't know he knew me, you know. So he tells me something very strange. He says, we must have a snooker table here at the church. Say, so I want to know why. Now, he's a professional. He says, that sport has a lot of influence. Say, so he says to me, many of the young people, for them to learn to play snooker, they have to go to the taverns because that's the only place where there's snooker. He's, yeah, so I told him, I said, well, we're going to buy a snooker table at Grace. We're going to buy. But, but not only that, Bazalan, I challenged him. I said, I want you to come and tell us about this sport and how we can use it for the purposes of the gospel. So as I'm sitting there, Papa, I'm being honest with you. I'm thinking very deeply because I've always been of the opinion that the presence of the church must be felt. And what I love in the church here, Barcelona, to every one of you, is to really appreciate how you have bought into the vision of the church Amen. and how you are a congregation or congregations now that are not a burden. We don't come here to play church. We come here to be transformed and to be changed by the power of God. So, Papa, thank you so much. Akens, thank you. And so, you'll be hearing more from us about you. I, I can guarantee you, I've taken seriously what has been said. In all these sermons, they're building up, they are making the picture clearer. And on top of that, God has given us an, an, an amazing anointing upon us. Amen. I've taught the church, Kuri, we are always anointed for a purpose. Amen. We're not anointed to feel good and roll on the floor. I don't mind rolling on the floor, but I say to them, you must be different and be an activist. Yeah. To roll on the floor and you are not. So as Papa is being escorted, Namani, let's give them a big hand, Bazalana, just to appreciate. Come on, church. No, 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 no. The, 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 the skit, the drama, yeah. Let's do that, Bazalana. Let's appreciate our parents as they move. 50 years of marriage, don't you just like that, eh? 78 years, 76 years. Come on, Bazalana, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. All right. Now, Bazalana, I'm just going to need a few more minutes of your time, all right? Do you have 10 minutes for me? Is the last thing. I'm not going to be back on stage. So just take your seats. I want to say one or two things to you as they get ready. Can you remove the... Can you remove the pulpit, please? Yeah. You know, even when you eat a meal, you have to have dessert. If Uja and you don't have a dessert, you've made a mistake. So just before you get the dessert, I just want to say this to you, everybody. Now, as you know that we, in October, will be starting in the first Monday with our prayer for the nation to roll back the clouds of darkness. Now I understand that it's in us being activists in the different places where the light will shine. And so I'm going to be praying heavily in this church from the first week of October to the first week in December. And my PA, Sis Nonjebo, made me aware. I wasn't aware that when you count the number of days from the first Monday we'll be praying in October to the last Friday in the first week of December, it's going to be 40 days of prayer, exactly 40 days. Now, I want to tell you something that was very significant that happened today. It was huge. I haven't told anybody. As my wife and I have been prayed for, the Lord reminded me of, tomorrow is the 18th of September, right? The 18th of September, 1983. That's the day we had our first service in Isaacson Higher Primary School. Listen carefully. Oh, 
Don't judge yet. I just want to share something with you. It's, it's very supernatural. I was a single guy at the time. We'd gone through a lot of problems, a lot of challenges. And when I stood to preach that day, we'd gone through weeks of so many problems. And there was such a supernatural outpouring of the Spirit of God. That impartation took us into the next phases of ministry. Now with the new phase, grace, it's another phase, P-H-A-S-E, phase of ministry, where I'm clear about it. On the 17th, just one day short, and this time I'm not single, I'm married. And Bishop Charlo says, you are a team, now you work as one. And I hadn't asked Dr. Gumbi to pray for me, but they pray for us in the same cycle of time. I know why a new day definitely has dawned in the church. And so, as I was sitting there, I was making very serious decisions. And I want to ask you, I hope you are ready to be a world changer. That was weak, that was weak, that was weak. Let me say it again, let me say it again. Let me say it. I hope you are ready to be a world changer. That was weak, that was weak. Let me say it again, let me say it again. I said, I hope you are ready to be a world changer. Let me say it again, I said, I hope you are ready to be a world changer. Why? Because the season has changed. When Dr. Maswanganyi says, you've looked up to us, now we look up to you. I heard him 10 times. I heard God say, take up the responsibility and lead. So you, you can't afford to be in this ministry or in another church and not be an activist. Amen. Bishop Chalo says, you work because you care. You work because you have passion. You work because when you see a pothole, you don't go and buy an SUV. You fix the pothole. Let me say it again. I hope you are ready to be activists in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So, I'm going to seriously have a very serious conversation with our bishops and our overseers and city administrators because I just sense this uneasiness, not a bad uneasiness. Now, I've never given birth to a child, so ladies, forgive me for what I'm about to say. I don't know how it feels like, but it's called Osman like birth pangs. You hear there's life kicking in your belly that is about to be born. And you have to do all that's necessary to get yourself in the right space for that birth to take place. It's a birthing of a new phase. Birthing of a new season. So... I don't know, and, and with the, the activism I see among our young people, I'm, I'm honestly struck by it. That choir in Ebina, after the, between the sessions, oh, 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 they went outside, they were just never eating la fella while I come and play these kids. And I went out and I stood there and listened to them. And I went to their con conductor, you know, these are young people from our youth, they practice all their hearts and some of them their parents were telling me how early these kids come to practice how much they're committed that doesn't happen every day grace bible church that doesn't happen every day there is a birth there are birth pangs so i don't know if oh you'll come and close for us in prayer after the skit. And I want to thank you. Ask for the other day. Manabatu. Esko Mako Shapagadzin Zong. 
I really appreciate the way you guys are so committed. And so, Bazalana, for the dessert, let's put our hands together for our arts department. Come on. You can take your seats. They're going to make their presentation. After they've made their presentation, Mfundi Sizweli will come and close in a word of prayer. God bless you all.